Hello, my name is Mickey Markovich. I'm the Global Tech Support Director at Russell Security Product. And thank you for joining me on another recorded webinar. And today we're going to review Access Energy Occupancy Management Procedure. On today's agenda, we will review what is occupancy management, how to achieve occupancy management on Access Energy, what are the limitations, and of course, a live demo that will explain details how to set up occupancy management on Access Energy. So what is occupancy management? Occupancy management is a process that helps help you manage the number of users allowed in a specific area. Such method will enable you to manage and control the allowed population of each location area. This means that you can strictly control how many people allowed in a certain area or how many people groups allowed in a certain area. Access Energy provides occupancy control via car parking management. This control allows you to control the occupancy by two levels, two methods. The first method is area maximum limitation, a single entry point to one area. And you say you may have a main door and you limit to X number of people allowed. Use a group max limitation, give you for one entry point, you can have multiple areas and each area can have its own maximum. The occupancy management user case are, so we can use it for car parking management, for area population management, especially today in those days with the COVID-19 situation, you can use the, the occupancy management to social distancing or crowd control activities. And of course, many more other applications that you can think of. One of them can be limit the amount of users allowed in a server room or in a control room, for example. On access energy, occupancy management is achieved by using the, the car parking model. The model allows management of maximum of lot user per area or user group. The occupancy management on access energy offer you two, met two methods of management. One, area, a global maximum for a specific area based on a single entry point. For example, on your office, only 10 person allowed to be entered in a certain time. So during this time, only 10 users will allow to enter following a valid access, access uh, granted. The 11th user will get access denied. The second method is a user groups. User group give you the option to manage multiple groups with a maximum for each group based on a single entry point. For example, for each department in the company, you can have a different limitation. For example, R&D allowed only five person in the area. Marketing allowed 10%. Sales allowed 6%. And in this way, every group, every department will have its own limitation. And when the limitation reach, when another user comes from the same group, he will not be able to enter the area. But other person will be able. And this way you have limitation on the single entry point when you don't have an entry point to limit the whole area. Of course, you can have an online status per area or per groups on Access Energy Client. You can select the area or select the group and see the current status of each area. And you can create AC link to be activation upon occupancy events, like area is full, area is not full, et cetera. And this can be set for each area or for each group. When using Access Energy Platform to you, to occupancy management, there is some limitation. The first limitation is this is an online feature. Online feature means that the access engine server and the access control panel must be online. This means that the access control panel must be communicated with the access engine server. If the access engine server is offline or there is no communication between the control panel and the server, this feature will not work. Another limitation is that each area must be located, located on the same 
control panel. This means that the entry point and the exit point to the area must be located on the same control panel. For example, if you have an entry with multiple turnstiles and you want to have an imitation on this area, all the readers must be connected to the same control panel. And then you can create a logic area as I will show you in the next step of this presentation. And you can have multiple readers set to the same area. Another limitation is that you can have only have one occupancy area per access control panel. So if you need multiple occupancy area management on the same uh, site, you will need a, control, a dedicated control panel for each area. On ACA 25, we have a limitation on 256 groups per control panel. And this is if you're using the user group occupancy management. And on AC215 IPB, AC225 IP and B, AC425 IP and B, we have 128 groups per control panels. Now we will move to the live demo where I will show you exactly, exactly how to define occupancy management on Access Sentry. And I will show you a live demo how it's work. Now we are on Access Sentry. As you can see, this is the standard Access Sentry versions that we have. I have already set up a few control panels, a few users, so we can move forward. For this demonstration, I will use my ACA25 that I have here on, the, on my desk. And I already set a few readers names here, as you can see. For example, I will use the main entry and the main exit as my occupancy area today. The first step to set up an occupancy area is to go to group and create a logic area. So under groups, go to access area and under global, add a new occupancy area a new access area logic. I will call it main office. And I will add the main entry and the main exit as a main entry is an entry to the area and main exit to the exit from the area. You can add as many doors and readers as you like to, an, to a logic area. I can also add the marketing entry and the market exit as an exit. And then this way I have two different entry points to the same area. This is in case that you have two different entry points to the same area or you have multiple entries in the same area. For example, for turn sites. My next step is to go to car parking, other par car parking and to add a new car parking. Car parking is equivalent to occupancy area. So click in the plus button and just say main office. Here I define how this occupancy management will work. It can be set as an access area. You will select the access area you created. So in this case, the main office area. And it can be checked by access area. This means that every user, user with access, grant, access rights to this area can be accessed and will be counted. Or by user group, and then it's a dual authentication that the access rights and the limitation will be based on the user group. And I will show you later on the same area how to manage by user group. But for now, for this demonstration, I will set by access area and I will set the access area, the, the limit to three. Just for the presentation now, you will see how it's work. So now I've created an access area. So I have the main office and I have a limitation and everything should work now. So I will use the users and I will try to access three times with three different users. So this is the first user. This is the second user and the third user access. What you can see here is that after the third user access area became full. So if another user or the same user would try to access again, we will get access denied full area. In order to prevent the same user for access time, you can use the anti-passback method 
and you know how to use access uh, anti passback method. So in this case, when you see IA is full, what's happened is that only when a user will get out, for example, I will ask, reach out to get out. So you see, it went out from the marketing exit and we can see the area is not full. If the area is not full, everything should work now. So if, if Josh would try to get, to go again, so again, so you see now Josh can access and area is full, so nobody can access again. If you want to view a live monitor, you need to click the P. The P will give us a live monitoring of the status. So you can see what is the maximum allowed and what is the coin counter. So if I will start exiting the area, so exit the first user, exit the second user, and exit the third user. We can see that the counter is set to zero. You see that the counter is set to zero. Sorry, I exit twice by Richard, and you see since Adam was still in, the counter was set to one. So this gives us <clears throat> the online status per group. Now I will show you how to use the user group options. So first of all, I will delete the car parking. And I will create it again, going to car parking, clicking plus, selecting the name, selecting the access area. But now instead of check by access area, I will select user groups and click OK. Now, when we select the user group under main office, I can add user group. So I will add two user groups. The first one will be marketing. Now we set limitation of three. The second will be R and D. Now we set limitation of one. This is just for the presentation. As I say, you can get up to 256 groups, depending on the controller you're using. Now we'll show you how to assign a group to a user. So I will go to the automation department and I will start editing the users. So John will be set to R&D. Frank will be set to R&D as well. So under car parking group, I'm assigning the occupation area or actually the occupation group. And the other user, I will set them the marketing. So for each user that I want to assign to a occupancy area, it will be assigned just easy. So now I will start entering the user to the area. Again, we're using the same area. So what we have seen now, we have seen Frank try to go in and the area became full because Frank is from RD and we set one. We can see is that John tried to access, but the access was denied because the area is full. And but in another, we can see that Adam was able to to enter because Adam is part of the marketing area, and marketing area have three location allowed, three person allowed inside the area. If I will go to the live monitoring, I can see that of the marketing, the maximum allowed is three, and the counter now is one. But if I go to the R and D, I can see that the maximum is one and the, and now there is one in the system. This is why R&D cannot access. So I will continue entering for marketing. And now you can see that the counter has, uh, 
change it currently. And we can see the area is full. And we have three and three. So if the four user will try to access me, Michael will try to access the area will be full. From this monitoring uh, path window, we can also set a new counter. So you can increase or decrease the allowed person in a occupancy area from here. Just click set new counter, set the new counter. Example, I will set it to two and click OK. So the, this was updated. I will exit with from two users. And this is how you change the definition from the monitoring window. Another option that we can use with access area, with occupancy area, is to link them to events. So under the panel, under AC link, I can create an event. My sort type will be car parking, occupancy areas. And the source can be either access area, if I have an imitation following an access area, or the access group. In this case, let's take the R&D. And for R&D, we can say for enter for full area state. And what will happen? We can active an output and just add an, an add light. We can generate an alarm and from the alarm create a pop-up. And let's say R&D is full. All allow R in, for example, set it in which color you like. You can have also sound if needed and click OK. Now we enable, yeah, and this AC link will be active always. So let's try to access R&D again. As you can see, R&D is full, all the loud in. Every time that, every time the area will achieve the maximum, you will get this event. It doesn't mean that you cannot open the door from the PC, but this is help you to achieve occupancy control, and you can control you can control the amount of users in an area. This feature is available on all version of Access Energy from 24.03. And of course, on AC825 from 27.5 and above. Let's summary what we have done today. So first of all, I show you and explain about occupancy management on Access Energy, including the limitation, including what can be done. I explain about the access area maximum that we can limit per maximum and what are the limitation of access area per maximum. User area maximum, online monitoring and online configuration. We can change the counter, we can change the limitation online without editing the groups. And of course we can create AC links and the AC link can create for a pop-up or can activate an output. I would like to thank, to thank you for visit, being with me today to viewing this recorded uh, webinar. If you like to know more about WASA product about technical wise, you are welcome to browse the WASA support uh, portal at support.wasasecurity.com. If you have any technical questions, you can email us at support.wasasecurity.com. And you want to learn more about WASA product, come and visit the WASA website WasserSecurity.com. Thank you very much. I was Mickey Markovich and hope to see you again in future recorded webinar.